then we will move on to question number 3. It is based on a common pleasing, common pleasing. It is about a company called Elkia, Elkia and Leisure Private Limited, call it HCL, Elkia and uh, Leisure Private Limited. Generally, uh, for the exam, the pre scene has to be uh, read couple of times, read couple of times in understanding the case, understanding the case. So, in the process, we need to gather certain information, gather information before going to the exam hall. For the exam hall, you will be given unseen material and then question will be asked. So, unseen material is generally given uh, maybe couple of pages or maybe couple of uh, paragraph, it is at least two pages. So, you will see the unseen material and then the question started. So, the pre seen level, you have enough time because it is before the three weeks at least before the exam. So, we all have that paper to go through to understand what this case is about. That will help us to know the case pluses, minuses, what are the inherent problems the company faces and what kind of management style the company has been managing and what kind of uh, problems they have faced and what are the plans the company has and in addition the financials, financials whatever they are given will help us to understand the gearing levels of the company, profitability of the company, liquidity levels of the company. Uh, if it is a group, what kind of segments working or uh, performing well and what segments are not performing well and uh, what kind of uh, acquisition strategy they can think of, what, uh, uh, what you call specific issues they are talking about. There are a lot of things, there are a lot of things you will absorb in a case. So, when you go to exam all you have a certain amount of knowledge about the case, that is all. You do not need to memorize anything here. It is only for you to guide your mind to say that what kind of case we are talking about, uh, what kind of question can be asked in unseen material. Because sometimes that uh, unseen material may not have 100 percent page to page relevance to the pre scene. There is no need. So, it is only a guideline to say that what are the things you can be asked or it can be related to. So, we will have to capture some of the things to answer the unseen material. So, maybe sometimes the 20 pages, now if you take this case 20 pages. So, when you come to the uh, unseen material the 20 pages may or may not have been relevant. So, only few, few points would have been relevant. So, that is how it is generally. So, when you talk I am not taking longer time to explain or go through this pre scene, but since the same thing can be again tested this same pre scene is used for the what you call the paper again you are having in uh, March that is next week. So, you need to understand that this will have some relevance, relevance of uh, knowing what kind of company it is. So, just to go to the pre scene I would say that okay, it is about the largest company in Sri Lanka, one of the largest company, but it is not, it is not a group, it is not a group. Firstly, background when you look at it, it is about a company started somewhere in 19. Uh, 69, 69 and it had been in business for longer period. So, you the 69 to now 2020, we are talking about 51 years, 51 years. It is a very long period of time a business is being in business. So, that that itself a history, when you say a company has a very good history, a long term, that itself shows that companies uh, have with, withered or they have faced many challenges, problems, different eras, different uh, political environments, different policies, uh, different customer, different customer demands, various things. So, that itself shows uh, and especially if it is the same owning, same people are running the company, same people are running the company. So, that gives the strength, the very good strength for the company where they have uh, come up, come up with the problem solving situations and they are very talented and experienced and knowledgeable in that area. So, just to give an idea that is just to give an history, uh, history says that this company have been in business, 
has a long come and long term and they have well respected in business and they have been in uh, they are good ethical values and they have got into five segments straight away i am going to the important area segments of businesses so when you take the segments of the businesses their main segments are healthcare healthcare then we are talking about fast moving consumer goods then they are into logistics logistics then we are talking about power sector that is wind power plant then we are talking about leisure leisure so these are five sectors company is already in five sectors they are company in so you are given i am not taking a page by page it's just to give you an understanding of the case right so they have different uh, eras different things they have gone through so if you take the sector review sector review uh, you can see the point 7 the point 7 page 7 of the pre scene sector review says the company fmcg fast moving consumer goods they have 25% market share 25% market share so that basically shows that they are very strong very strong in that business environment 25% market share is very good market share so in fmcg sector or segment they have very good market share and they have given you the products and services under sector you can read out those things healthcare they have been in hospital they have been in pharmaceuticals so they are uh, largest distributor of pharmaceutical surgical diagnostic products and they have uh, hospital in three area nugegoda ragama and kandy so basically we are talking about healthcare they are pharmaceutical business pharmaceutical business and laboratory business and they have hospital so they are given the segment what they do so pharmaceutical they are talking about 28% market share diagnostic laboratory 20% market share hospital 12% market share so they are talking about very good market share in different segments right hospital may be a lower end but still they have other to 20 20 28% then they are given you leisure travel so they are the inbound tourism right they have been in business they are doing that and they have already have hotel they have already already invested in hotel they have mentioned that so and they are planning for another investment in hotel also that is in page number page number 3 right few years later company opened first hotel coral gardens in ikadua which is five star hotel under rooms by 2012 so they are in already in business from 2012 under rooms hotels bonus ke bonus ke is now working hard to achieve the target opening of two five star hotels mulletti and pasikuda under 2022 by 2022 under umbrella so they are talking about one hotel already in business two hotels they are planning to build so in their future plans future plans they are working on two five star hotels two five star hotels they are finished that in 2022 so leisure sector so it has hotel one hotel running and the inbound tourism inbound tourism inbound tourism so these they are business leisure and inbound tourism then logistics they actually provide logistical arrangements in its warehouse in sidua which is equipped with latest technology provide budgetary logistics solutions such as facility to import facility for import and export products storing local transport so logistic business they are in so they are talked about what kind of uh, services they are providing in logistic and segment power and energy they are talking about five wind mills five megawatts windmill as you know as a background of the case please note in sri lanka we are predominantly we using thermal power which is mainly based on oil and now recent past 
Now there is huge emphasis given for renewable energy which are solar, wind and hydro water. So from the hydro or the solar or wind the government is pushing more and more electricity to be produced for the country. So that is where the opportunity lies. So in this company also already in wind power 5 megawatt already they are in business. So there is a huge opportunity if you really look at it the country is gearing towards using renewable energy. So anyone who is want to invest in solar or water, uh, hydro or even wind there are opportunity coming up because government wants power at a lower cost rather than depending on the oil based there is thermal power. Oil based the disadvantage is one is it is not environment friendly, it's two the oil is imported so you are exposed to exchange rate cost. So rather than the only import cost you are talking about exchange rate impact so there is a disadvantage why the exchange goes out of the country. At the same time solar, or hydro, or wind you have environmental uh, things are covered or you are protected second your exchange rate impact is not there. So please be aware that this is for this industry. Then human capital they have said the human resource policies of the company is very good. They have adopted human resource policies and best practices and they have tackled, tackled indicators all that from the HR side. So HR side there is a strength just to understand the strength of the company. And ownership structure, page number 9, ownership structure is given. It is a actually a, a group of private people, it is not a corporate, it is all private people. Mr. Edward 30 percent, Mrs. Vasana 20 percent, George 10 percent. So you have been given the 10 shareholders, 100 percent ownership is given. Then they are given you the additional information additional information about the competitor information, competitor information. Our company they have said number uh, per share nominal value 10 rupee and a similar company in the industry is given ABX PLC, ABX PLC, beta given, debt to equity ratio given. Then market information page number 9 market information which is mainly given government bond rate 5 percent, recurrent rate of return sorry, market return 12 percent, corporate tax rate 28 percent. So by looking at that number you need to know that we have to use CAPM model, CAPM model to calculate cost of equity. So CAPM model we can calculate cost of equity by risk free rate plus beta risk premium. So this gives you risk premium. So risk free rate given 5 percent, beta of the company we do not know, risk premium page number 9 gives you market return 12 percent, government bond 5 percent, so risk premium 7 percent. So we need to know the HCL beta to calculate HCL cost of equity. We need to calculate HCL beta to calculate HCL cost of equity. Since HCL beta is not given, we are given we are given the competitor company beta 1.10, competitor company 1.10. So we need to find out, we need to find out the beta of HCL using competitor company beta. We will come to that number calculation. Then they are given you two companies DEF and GHI, two companies. They are given you those companies uh, enterprise value EBI, TDA, market price. These are listed companies so they have market price number of shares given for two companies. We may use that information for some reason. Then a geographical reason and pharmaceutical industry as you know in Sri Lanka we are primarily 90 percentage of the pharmaceutical requirements are imported from elsewhere and India plays a major role in, in uh, sending goods to Sri Lanka. So for India it is one of the nation and Sri Lanka imports 50 percent or 49 percent from India, Pakistan 8 percent, US 3 percent. So those are the information given. Then 
you might see that the company's employees are well paid, well paid and loyal. In 2019, 2019, that is the last year, the company has, company has invested in small, sorry, Bangladesh business. Company has invested in Bangladesh business. The Bangladesh business investment has 35 percent ownership. Bangladesh business has investment of 35 percent ownership. And we have invested 984 million, 984 million in Bangladesh business. Bangladesh business income statement and the balance sheet is given. So, we should know that we have invested in Bangladesh 35 percent, 35 percent. And we would like to go into region, go into region. So, already we have started in Bangladesh by investing 35 percent. So, there is a possibility that uh, increasing, increasing stake in Bangladesh. Company has a possibility of increasing stake in Bangladesh. So, that is second. Third, there are discussion by the director board because this company HCL has five segments, but they are not separate companies. They all are under one umbrella called HCL. So, you see that HCL has five sectors under the same company. So, there is a view by I think the finance director, he says that we should convert these segments into a separate company, separate company. Rather than we having it as a segment, we need to convert that into a limited liability company. So, there had been a uh, discussion we can look at it. Page number 4, page number 4 of the precinct. The CEO of HCL opposed his belief, opposed the belief and strongly urged Edward to consider separating the individual units into unique companies in order to minimize risk and to implement an efficient internal control system to measure the performance of each sector accurately. So, please note the company has, company has 5 sectors rather than having a 5 companies. So, they are not a group, they are one company and 5 sectors. So, chairman has believed in that over a period of time and he has basically even the new business are created as a strategic business unit rather than a company. But the CEO's belief is that because of that, we are not able to monitor the performance properly and we can't have proper internal controls as a internal controls as well as to minimize the risk, it is better that we have a separate company. So, that is the views discussed. So, maybe there is a possibility that company going for separate companies and company go and go for IPO company can go for IPO, right, for share raising or fund raising, they can go for IPO. Then they have talked about leisure impact, sorry, COVID-19 impact, COVID-19 impact also been talked about. So, they are talking about their COVID has impacted the segments, they are in page number 7. During a recent board meeting, during a recent board meeting, finance director also mentioned the current global economic downturn faced by world leading economy due to COVID-19 and the importance of having a sound risk management process in a company. The chairman of HCL highlighted that the world is currently experiencing lockdown and restriction on travel across the countries and cities and there is a direct impact on hospitality industry and giant business enterprise across the world. So, they have given a global picture, the COVID-19 impact in the businesses. So, we need to understand that this company having 5 segments. Okay? So, we are talking about financials, financials are given up to 31st March 2020, 2020 March. Actually, the COVID-19 in Sri Lanka started in 2020 March, 2020 March. So, our financials is 2020 March. So, by that time, 2020, March 31st, I do not think you will have a significant impact on your PNL or balance sheet. But subsequently, 
we all know that what happened. So, we are talking about today's context. This company at that point in time, 2020 March, are having enough uncertainty about the future. Enough uncertainty about the future. Because the COVID-19 already had just started at that time. And globally, people have started taking action. Lockdowns have been placed. Restrictions have been placed. Lot of uh, human impact has been happening. So, businesses are going through difficult times. All are visible. So, when it comes to the five sectors we have, we need to understand which sector will have a serious impact. Firstly, the impact of sector is leisure. Why? It is based on inbound tourism and hotels. So, who is going to come? Tourism is the first affected because of all the countries started closing the air borders. So, no flights, no travel uh, across the countries. So, traveling was stopped or basically nobody traveled. So, tourism will affect negatively, seriously. That is where leisure industry is going to go through a difficult time. We are putting a five star hotel in Mulletiu and uh, another place. I, I think there are two uh, projects are being done. Already we have one in Ecuador. So, these projects are having difficulties because they, we do not have immediate revenue generation for another one year or more. We do not know. So, we have a very uncertain thing in the leisure industry. Second, logistics. Second, logistics, which is mainly on the import export based, warehouse usage, transport, logistical related aspects. So, logistics will have an impact on the power sector uh, because of the COVID 19. Healthcare, comparatively, healthcare business continue to survive and sustain their business because there are always a need for these services. And especially all of us know, thanks to all these people, the healthcare services, it is mainly government related, but still the private sector also continued their support for these issues. So, therefore, the healthcare industry have a business. They will not have a negative impact, right. They will go through little hard uh, time on their normal arrival of channeling and the operations and uh, everything have dropped, but still they were able to generate income in different, different services in that end. And FMCG industry, which is generally a consumer goods, people still use to buy, even though people did not go to the places to buy goods. Online deliveries, online purchases have started booming in the country in during that period. So, this business also prosper in the future. Power sector is a very, very, very uh, less relationship towards the COVID 19 because it is a wind power plant, it is uh, generated, wind is generated. Uh, there is no impact of the COVID-19. So, therefore, there is no uh, direct or indirect, I do not see any impact on the power sector. So, these are two sectors, COVID-19 have impact in the 2020 March onwards. Okay? So, just to get an idea about the segments, what we are talking. Financial will come later. Then, as I mentioned, this company, they have given you the competitor uh, beta, competitor beta and the uh, debt to equity ratio of the company, company called ABXPLC. So, ABXPLC, they have given you beta is 1.1. And they are given you debt equity ratio 1 is to 2. So, beta measures the risk, beta measures the systematic risk, systematic risk. So, this is something we need to know. Each company has systematic risk, each company has systematic risk. So, beta of ABX is 1.1 that reflects the riskiness of ABX. That includes business risk and financial risk, both together reflected in 1.1. And it is a geared company, it is a geared company, you have a debt. So, we need to know that same industry company, same industry company, what risk is common? Same industry company, business risk is common, same. Financial risk will vary because your gearing can be varying. If you are gearing is on the equal, 
same industry company, you are both risk is same. But if you are saying your gearing is different, your business risk is same, not the financial risk. So, business risk measurement is the asset beta. Business risk measurement is asset beta. So, asset beta is equal to same industry companies. Equity beta can vary. Why? Equity beta have an impact of the asset beta, that is business risk and financial risk. So, equity beta can vary even the same industry company. Asset beta is common. So, what we have to know now, 1.10 is ABX, that is the same industry company and it is a geared company. So, we can calculate ungeared beta of ABX or maybe the asset beta. So, when you calculate using your gear to ungeared relationship table or the formula beta of ungeared equals to beta of geared into E divided by E plus D 1 minus tax. So, beta of geared 1.10 multiplied by equity is 2, 2 plus debt 1, 1 minus 28. That gives you asset beta, this is ungeared beta, beta of ungeared, asset beta is ungeared beta, which is based on the geared beta 1.1, we can calculate ungeared beta 0 0.81, 0 0.81. This is the ungeared beta or asset beta. This formula will give you the number that is asset beta or ungeared beta. From the asset beta, asset beta means it is measuring the business risk. Same industry, all companies, if you say banking industry, all banks will have a similar business risk, asset beta is 8.8. Our company, HCL, we need to find out what is our gearing, what is our gearing. So, HCL gearing we have to find out HCL gearing. HCL as in their balance sheet, HCL have balance sheet, equity, equity 12.7 billion, debt, debt, you have to find out your debt in your balance sheet, interest bearing loans and borrowing, short term and long term and you are given a bank overdraft. You have to make a call, the bank overdraft, is it part of your long term debt or it is part of short term loan. The bank overdraft, if you need it continuously on a permanent nature, then it is becoming a long term debt. If you do not need it, only on a short term I take it and then settle it, I take it, I settle it, then you are not dependent on that, then it is short term, you can exclude that. So, if you take this company, 12.7 billion company and your long term loan, if you take interest bearing borrowing, short term, long term interest bearing borrowing, generally the short term interest bearing borrowing in your current liability, which are part of your long term interest bearing borrowing, because for accounting purposes, we have to show the 12 month installment current liability. So, on that basis, your 1.5 billion interest bearing borrowing and current liability, non current liability 553 million. So, we are talking about 2.10, 2 2.1 if you want, 2.1 is your debt on the assumption that bank overdraft is a short term financing, it is not a long term financing. So, please make a note somewhere, assumption the bank overdraft is assumed to be short term financing, not a long term financing. So, on that basis, we are not considering part of debt capital. So, we are talking about 14.8 billion, 14.8 billion and we have to find out the weightage, weightage. You will see that your gearing Eighty six percent equity, fourteen percent debt, that is your debt equity relationship. On that basis, you apply the same formula what you looked at earlier, same formula what you looked at earlier, apply the numbers 86 14 gearing ratio, and then your beta is 0 0.90, 0 0.90, 0 0.90. So, this is the beta of HCL 0 0.90. On that basis, 0 0.9 into 7, 6.3. 11.3 percent cost of equity. Cost of equity under CAP a model using uh, beta, this is equity beta, equity beta. So, what we did?
from the ABX company equity beta, we converted it to asset beta, that is here what the formula, then we got 8.81. From the ungeared beta, again we calculate equity beta of the HCL using their gearing ratio. Then we get the equity beta of, so this is giving you the uh, reflection of riskiness, business and financials both together of HCL 0.90. When you apply that, it is 11.3 cost of equity. 11.3 cost of equity. So, we should know at the pre seen level we can calculate gearing of the company, we have calculated gearing of the company, we have calculated the cost of equity of the company. So, we know the cost of equity of the company is 11.3, 11.3 and gearing, gearing uh, 14 percent. So, gearing reflect low geared company, low geared company. The company is not a very high geared company, is a low geared company. So, we have an idea that this company is a low geared company. So, when you go to the financials, 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 you are given a PNL. 2020 PNL to the 19 PNL audited and balance sheet is given and then you are given a segmentation, segmentation and the Bangladesh operation PNL balance sheet. So, when you look at the PNL, right? So, when you look at the PNL, in the pre seen level, we actually do a financial analysis, right? Financial analysis just to get an idea about the financials, right? So, when you look at this financial, if you do the ratios, you can do calculation of ratios, various ratio we can calculate and see what this financials of this company is or what segments are there, what kind of dependence they have, whether they are good liquidity, all that we can look at. So, we start from a just a glance through. PNL, we are talking about to the 19 and 20, 1.4 billion to 1.9 billion profits. So, profits have gone up, revenue has gone up serious significantly, 22 billion has become 32 billion, almost 50 percentage, almost 50 percentage revenue growth and profits have gone up tremendously. So, when you look at this company in 2020 March, right, observation or maybe you can say financial analysis, I am just doing a brief financial analysis, sales significant growth significant growth, profits significant growth. We are not talking about small 10, 15 percent growth we are talking. Here we are talking about more than 45 percent revenue growth and we are talking about uh, 50 percent, almost 50 percent or 40 percent uh, profit growth. So, it is a 40 percent roughly and it is almost 50 percent. So, we are talking about very large growth in the revenue and profits. So, we will have to look at the segmentation, which segments are contributing to this. So, when you take the pre seen, pre seen and the segments, page number 18, page number 18, your pre seen analysis, page number 18, the segmentation, out of 32 billion revenue, 32 billion revenue. Right, you could support it your number calculation pre seen level, right. So, I am just limiting the discussion to the understanding rather than getting into specific numbers. 32 billion revenue, 32 billion revenue, which segments are contributing? There are 5 segments, 5 segments. Out of 32 billion, FMCG give 12 billion, healthcare give 10 billion. So, we can understand that out of 32 billion, almost two third of your revenue comes from two segments. So, out of five segments, FMCG and uh, healthcare, both of these segments contribute in terms of turnover, turnover say two third, contribute two third of turnover, more than two third contributed by FMCG and healthcare. Profitability, 
2.2 billion profit before tax. 2.2 billion profit before tax. FMCG 1 billion, healthcare 1.1 billion. Again, these two segments almost entire profits. Even though five segments we are running, almost entire profits is run or given by these two segments. FMCG healthcare. So, what you do not need to calculate the ratios and stuff, right? You can do that, you have to do, right? I am just telling you at the precinct level, you have to do the ratios and you know calculation of the numbers, what kind of percentage of revenue contributed by FMCG, what percentage contribution by other sectors, what kind of profit contributed by FMCG, you can do all these charts at precinct, we have enough time. But what you have to finally get into understanding. Turnover two third comes from these two, profits hundred percent comes from these two. What does it mean? Other three sectors, three sectors, logistic, leisure, power, all almost making losses, almost they are loss, loss making. So, you can look at that, leisure and travel, 2019 loss, 2020 profits, logistics both year losses. Power and energy both your losses. So, basically, three sectors not performing leisure 2020 turned around, turned around, but unfortunately, we know that what happened COVID 19. So, 2020 only we have made profits, but we are now getting into COVID 19. So, this sector will not be performing again. So, even though they are turned around to making 75 million profits, next year you can't expect that even. So, that is loss making. Other two sectors anyway loss making for last two years. So, basically what we are understanding, company had uh, invested money and resources are allocated, but these two sectors are performing really well, but these sectors are losing money, losing money. And the amount of money invested you can find out, uh, FMCG 8 billion out of 21 billion, healthcare 7.8, so almost 16 billion out of 21 billion. So, balance 5 billion, which is 25 percentage of the total assets, 25 percentage of the total assets, you are put into the other three sectors. So, 25 percentage of your assets, 25 percentage of assets allocated for what? Three sectors. But that three sectors are not performing well, not performing well. So, we have to now get the understanding that we have a serious problem with the three segments, three segments. This is one of the reasons the CEO was telling at the beginning that company needs to uh, convert this SPU as a company. Why? Then your performance is very clearly highlighted and if you are not performing, you need to decide either to close down or turn around the company in various strategies. Since you are not doing and you are part of one company called HCL, you are overall when you look at it, your company is profitable. So, everybody is getting benefits and enjoying benefits, not performing. So, that three companies are seriously in trouble, we need to see what should be done. So, pre seen level, we need to understand that three sectors restructure or dispose. We have to get a conclusion why we have to do this to restructure or dispose in the unseen level. We have a problem seriously in these three sectors and we have allocated 25 percentage of money for that business. It is not worth it. It is not worth it. So, that is basically uh, segment side. Then the balance sheet and PNO Bangladesh is given. We can understand that Bangladesh is making profits. And we have 35 percent ownership, stake 35 percent, 35 percent ownership. So, we are getting 2020, Six hundred thirty million profits Bangladesh has, and we have thirty-five percentage. 
So, we need to understand that So, we are getting 220 million profits, 221 million, 20 million profits and our investment is given in pre seen 984 million. So, we are talking about more than 20 percent return, return on investment if you take it from the profitability return. Twenty two point four percent, twenty two point four percent return, and we looked at the cost of equity of the company eleven point three, eleven point three. So that gives an idea what the company has invested a very lucrative investment in Bangladesh, twenty two percent, very good return we are going to get. So that's a very good sign. So as I mentioned that the regional diversification. Regional diversification is good for the company because uh, it can make more money than depending on only in Sri Lanka. They, they go into region, they have more opportunity. So, there is a higher chance that you can go to a further acquisition, right? Further acquisition, further acquisition. So, you can make money. I think page number 6. Page number 6, if you read it, at a recent board meeting, Sisira submitted a board paper, Sisira submitted, sorry, Sisira is finance director, submitted a board paper emphasizing the importance of looking for acquisitions and partnering. Board paper emphasizes the importance of looking for acquisition and partnering. HCL future strategies are to grow as a regional leader and also get rid of non value adding activity to maintain sustainable growth. So, I said here segments which are non value adding leisure, logistics, power, all three are not performing well. Okay. Hotel industry or leisure turn around 2020, but again we know that what is going to happen. So, they have to decide here and they again get into regional presence, they can increase into regional presence, they are talking about it. So, they are the opportunity that you have to look at regional side and further they have said you have to looking for acquisitions and partnering. So, the under the this thing acquisitions or partnering possibility in the future plans. Okay. Edward always page number 6 again. Edward always looked for investment from known friends for entity or equity, also preferred to borrow from bank rather than going public to raise necessary funds for plus yeah. However, the finance director Sisira emphasized that HCL must seriously consider going public to raise funds for future projects. So, that is what we mentioned IPO here. This is the finance director statement, finance director statement. So, you have various things could be uh, looked at at the future plans. One is the COVID impacted situation what is going to happen, three sectors we have to analyze and see whether to continue or not, five star hotel what we are going to do, uh, where they can be asking to evaluate the investments, increase state in Bangladesh to foreign investment opportunity continuing or increasing and the uh, separate company converting that SBU to companies what is the impact, IPO, acquisition partnerships all these are possible areas of going into. In the, in the future plans, you need to understand that you can be asked to when you say separate companies, your valuation area, valuation area is very much tested or possible to be tested. So, valuation could be tested and the pre seen still I am talking, I am not talking about December 2020 paper, I am talking about December 2020 pre seen still, right. At that point of discussion pre seen, the valuation is possible, right. The separate company when you convert, you want to value the company separately or if you are going for IPO, IPO anyway you have to value the company. Then the Bangladesh company further we can look at the acquisition or merger. So, again the valuation chapter we have to use.
Then the company at the moment is only 14 percent gearing, 14 percent gearing. A successful company, a profitable company, low geared company, if they are having expansion opportunity, expansion opportunity, how they should fund, how they should fund, always and always. Remember, when you are a profitable company and a lower geared company, always try much as possible to fund it through debt capital, fund it through debt capital. Because you have a lower cost of funding, by taking that money, your opportunity, whatever you have, you can invest and earn more return for shareholder. So the objective of gearing is to borrow money at lower cost and invest and earn return which will increase the wealth of the company. So the objective of gearing will be achieved, especially when a company is profitable and a low geared company. Borrow further. So as the chairman mentioned, sometimes you don't need IPO because you are a still a low, low geared company and you are a profitable company. Better to borrow money and invest. Unless your amount of investment needed for your expansion, regional expansion is very high, where you cannot sustain borrowing, then you can go for IPO. But still, I would say initial start, borrow money, borrow money. By borrowing money at a lower cost, you are able to earn more return for shareholders. That is the object of the gearing. And the ROI of the Bangladesh is 22 percent, that gives very good signal that you can mo make more money. And especially Sri Lanka rupee depreciates again the currencies all over the world. So we have a better benefit of earning more money, right? The main currencies with which Sri Lanka rupee depreciates. So we can benefit out of the Bangladesh uh, thing because Bangladesh is a country which has grown even in during the corona or the COVID-19 compared to other countries in the world. Right, so that shows that country is stronger than other countries the way people think. So you need to understand that the opportunity is there for you to further increase your investment in Bangladesh. So that is resilient country, so which will perform, which will give you a better return than what you are expecting. Then looking at the liquidity of the status of the company, just a quick look at of the equity, equity sorry liquidity of the company you can see the current assets is 9.6 billion current liability 6.7 so that shows that you are having a better current ratio but if you take the quick ratio you have 4.4 billion current assets quick ratio 4.4 billion, 4.4 billion against 6.7 billion. So it is less than 1, less than 1. So which shows that you have liquidity concerns, liquidity concerns. Current ratio is more than 1, but quick ratio shows less than 1, less than 1. If you want for 2019, Three point six and current liability is five point six. So that is also again less than one. So that shows that you have liquidity concern for the last two years. So when you say you have liquidity concern and your turnover has increased tremendously, forty plus percentage turnover increase and you have liquidity concerns. So so you may have a question about asking whether the company is over trading, whether the company is over trading. So question is, over trading is defined as a company grows faster, company grows faster without having sufficient long term capital, without having sufficient long term capital. If you are growing, you are growing significantly compared to previously, it is good thing because you are more revenue, more profits, more assets, all that fine. But you will have uh, long term capital uh, shortage, long term capital shortage. So if you take your company, you are talking about 21 billion assets, 21 billion assets compared to 18.5 billion assets in your balance sheet, page 16, page 16. So you are talking about 2.8 billion, 2.8 billion asset increase, 2.8 billion asset increase. That 2.8 billion asset increase, you can see that 
your current liability has gone up by only three uh, six hundred million. So out of your two point total assets, total assets, twenty one point three eighteen point five. 2.8 billion assets have gone up and your uh, long term liability has gone up by 550 million, 0.55 billion and short term liability gone up by 1 billion. And your equity had gone up by 1.3 billion. So, this 2.8 billion growth in your assets, 2.8 billion growth in your assets, your current uh, assets have gone up significantly, even your uh, long term assets have gone up. So, you have financed your long term assets, finance your long term assets mainly from 0.5 from long term liability, 1.3 equity, 1 billion short term. So, the short term liability 1 billion is not matching, not matching. Why? This 2.8 billion increase is a long term assets. Why say long term? You might say okay, current assets have gone up, current assets have gone up, but current assets is not a long short term thing. Current assets mean inventory and debtors and mainly those are the your current assets, inventory 5.2, debtors 4.3. So, that is the main two assets. Those assets are not short term from financial management point of view. From your accounting, yes, it is a financial or what you call short term. Why? You realize the money in within one year. Financial management point of view, whatever you have invested in current assets, the inventory and data, you cannot recover your money. That means, you can't take out of your company the money. The investor who gave shareholder or debt holder who gave money cannot take the inventory and debt of money out. It should be inside the business. Why? Your business is growing. So, you can't take it. So, that means that investment you have made, working up the investment what you have made is a long term investment. Since it is a long term investment, entire 2.8 billion, entire 2.8 billion increase is a long term investment. And you have invested in Bangladesh 1984, almost 1 billion you have invested in Bangladesh. It is a long term investment. You are not talking about one month you are recovering. Long term investment. Not long term investment, entire 2.8 billion you have to finance through what? Long term. You cannot use short term. So, this is not matching. This is not matching. So, please understand when you are growing significantly, that is 40 or plus 40 percent plus growth in your revenue and you cannot depend on short term, you have to find long term capital. If you are using short term capital to finance your long term requirements, then you are talking about overtrade. So, this is a one of indication of this case they have over trading. We have to look at various symptoms, but few symptoms shows they over trade. At least the FMCG and the LKR say take them. So, over trading will result in liquidity issues, liquidity issues. Already we see that over trading results in liquidity issue. So, what is the alternative for this company? They have to find long term capital. I do not think they have a problem in raising long term capital. They do not need to go for IPO. They can borrow money long term. They can restructure. Where they are a profitable company. The banks will give money. So, they have opportunity of uh, restructuring the loans, short term overdraft to long term loan. Long term loan, then automatically this problem is solved. So, liquidity can be better off. Liquidity can be better off. Over trading problem can be sorted out. So, keep that in mind, this company as seems to be having over trading, over trading, but we uh, they have they have way of sorting out also, they have way of sorting out also. 
So those are the pre-scene level. What are the basic stuff we need to be aware of? Right? What are the concerns? We have looked at issues what they have, what are things to be sorted out. We have an idea. With that, we go into the unseen material. Unseen material. So we go to the unseen material. So unseen material, if you read, they are talking about board of directors of HCL, board of directors of HCL secure the chairman's approval, carry out a due diligence exercise with a view to listing HCL shares on the Columbus Stock Exchange. So what we talked about IPO, they are talking about IPO here. This, so they are going for IPO. A team was appointed to determine the value for the shares based on the market based valuation methods and came up with value of 33 rupees per share. So they have valued the shares, they say 33 rupees per share. Early February, this is in February 2020 and they came up with 33 rupees. However, the listing process was then slowed down due to corona outbreak, but the chairman accelerated the process and instructed the final to carry out the discounted cash valuation in early August 2020. So they have again done the valuation in August 2020 and the value is 15 to 20 rupees under DCF method. Under DCF method, they have valued the company and they got 15 to 20 rupees. So earlier they got 33 rupees, now 15 to 20 rupees. And they given you the operating expense, the growth rates, depreciation, variable relationship, effective tax rate and capital expenditure and working capital investment, how it changes, all that information given. There are two meetings held in October. Meta 1, chairman instructed about a mega project. So they are talking about they are coming up with vaccine for the COVID-19 and other influences, influencers. So they are given that in phases, phase 1, 2, 3 and commercial production. The So meeting 1 talks about the entire about it. Then financing the mega project, financing the mega project, the financiation for such a massive and risky project is at this was just, uh, at this was a large question on everyone's mind. It was clear that current shareholder were a bit reluctant on the project, but they did not turn it down as the chairman was quite positive about it. Some of the existing shareholders suggested that the project should be financed predominantly by debt. Some of the existing shareholders suggested that the project should be financed predominantly by debt, 80 percent debt and be undertaken under a new company. However, final decision was not made on this. Method 2, CEO tabled a board paper on problematic SBUs, CEO tabled a board paper on problematic SBUs and mentioned that a critical evaluation is required for future direction. CEO tabled a board paper on problematic SBU, mentioned that critical evaluation is required for future direction. So meeting one talks about or matter one talks about the uh, mega project for vaccine uh, manufacturing. They are given in the research one, two, three and all. And matter, matter two is talking about the evaluating the some of the SBU that we talked about in the precinct. So we will go to the questions. A part, the chairman raised concern over DC evaluation, chairman raised his concern over DC evaluation as it significantly deviated from the market based valuation. Chairman raised his concern over DCF valuation as significantly deviated. DCF valuation gives you 15 rupees to 20 rupees per share average. 33 rupees the 2020 market based valuation. So they are asking validate the value A part. Validate the value Validate the value per share based on DCF valuation method. Validate mean we have to recalculate or to check whether the value is right. And explain three key reasons for such variation. Why this is vari variation? When compared to market based valuation, 18 marks. So basically this is about a valuation question. Valuation question, they are asking about what is the value of this company? What is the value of this company? So they have done a valuation, market based valuation earlier in February 2020 got 33 rupees and August they when they do the DCF method it got 15 to 20. 
So it has come down. So the exam uh, the chairman is asking why it's variant, why it's variant, why it's variant from the earlier value one. That is one part of the answer. Second one is the validate the calculation. Validate the calculation. So if you read the question, they are given you saying that operating expenses and operating profit will increase by 2% per annum for the first two years, 4% per annum for the next two years, 5% per annum for the fifth year. So you have been given the operating cash flow, operating profit, they are not saying operating cash flow, operating profit, what growth you will see. First two years 2%, per after that 4% per for two years, after that 5%. Per so that is basically given. And after that, infinite period growth will be 3%. Per and depreciation given, percentage of the operating expenses, working capital is percentage of the depreciation, effective tax, tax rate 25%, per capital expenditure given, and the cost of debt 8%. So it is about the free cash flow based valuation, free cash flow based valuation, sorry. So I, I think it is very straightforward valuation question. Uh, if you look at your suggested answer, right, so because it is a very straight, straightforward calculation, so I am not taking time for you to calculate that. So if you take your suggested answer straight away, we will discuss that to save time on the discussion. Right. So, you can look at it, your operating expense growth, page number 9 on your suggested answer, suggested answer, page number 9, you can look at the uh, growth, they are given 102 percent, 102 percent, that means year on year, your operating expense will grow by that percentage, 2 percent, 2 percent, then 4 percent, 4 percent and 5 percent. So, operating expenses, if you go to the pre-seen material, pre-seen material, you can look at your pre-seen material PNL, pre-seen material, page number 14, page number 14, your operating expenses is 8.3 8 8 billion. So, you can look at 8.3 is year 0 pre-operating expenses, which will grow by what is given in the page of the answer. Then your working capital, what they are given in the question is working capital will be 125 percent depreciation amortization. So, we need to first know that what is the depreciation amount? Depreciation amount is on the free cash flows, valuation page number 10. Depreciation is given 20 percent is operating expenses, 20 percent operating expenses. 8.3 billion is the operating expenses of 2020, 20 percent is of 1.6 billion. So, that you can see there 1.6 billion. So, that will go up on the same level because operating expenses are going up. So, you are given the table page number 9, page number 9 operating expenses are given on which you calculate your 20 percentage of that operating expenses is your depreciation. Then 125 percentage is your working capital. So, you can see that in the page number 9 working capital is 125 percentage of depreciation. So, 1667. 125 percentage of that, 125 percentage of that, that gives you 2084, 2084. This is year 0, year 0. Year 1, if you calculate the same thing, 2125. So, if you take your working capital increase, working capital increase, it is a gap between 2, 41, 41. So, please understand what we need to get for working capital investment in cash flow, free cash flow based valuation is the increase in your working capital. Only the additional amount you have to invest, not the entire 2084 every year you invest, only the additional investment you have to calculate. So, that is basically given in the suggested answer, right. So, you can calculate it for 5 years. So, when you take year 0 to year 5 in the suggested answer page number 10, operating profit 
it grows at 2 percent, 2 percent, then 4 percent and 5 percent. You can see the numbers. Then a depreciation is given that is also we calculated or we can calculate based on operating expenses. Working capital expenditure from the earlier table you can get each year how much additional working capital you have to invest. Capital expenditure which is of course under unseen material they are given for 5 year capital expenditure 2000, 2100. So, you put your cash flows. Income tax 25 percent age operating profit. So, operating profit we have it on the top. So, 25 percent then we get a free cash flow. So, we have the free cash flow for year 1 to 5, year 1 to 5 free cash flows you can see in the table. Terminal value which is a, from the year 5, year 5 how the free cash flow is going to grow? They have given you the growth will be unseen material 3 percent growth. So, your growth going to be 3 percent. So, you have to calculate at the 3 percent growth rate perpetual cash flow what is your terminal value? Then your cost of capital. Now, what I would like to explain to you, we are valuing the company using DCF method. We are valuing, this question is about valuation, valuation using free cash flows to firm, free cash flows to firm. Free cash to firm belongs to equity holders and debt holders both of them are going to get the free cash. Therefore, this belongs to them. So, what we will do? We are discount using WACC. Why? That also represent both of them. So, this firm cash flow belongs to equity holder and debt holder. We discount using WACC which also belongs to equity and debt holder. Then what we get? Market value of equity plus debt. Market value of equity plus debt. This belongs to the both of these people, market value what you calculate on this form. This market value equity and debt we calculate, then market value debt we minus, then we get market value of equity. This is the value of, value of the company. This is the form we, we have to follow. We have to get the free cash to firm. We discount using WACC. Why we discount using WACC? Because the cash flow belongs to equity or debt hold. So, when you discount using WACC, we get the market value equity plus debt. Again, both of debt values. From that, you minus the market value debt, then you get market value equity. This is the company valuation. Then you divide by the number of shares, number of shares, then you get a market value per share, per share. Please remember, Debt market value, if you do not have it, you use the book value, book value. I think we calculated earlier book value of debt 2.1 billion, 2.1 billion. So, from this market value, you minus 2.1 billion, then you get market value equity. So, now coming to the suggested answer, in order to discount, in order to discount, we need to calculate WACC. Why? This is the cash flow is free cash flow firm then we get the WACC. So, we calculate cost of equity, cost of equity which is 11.3, cost of debt they have given I think cost of debt after tax is 8 percent, cost of debt after tax 8 percent. So, your WACC you can calculate 11.3 into 86 percent, 8 percent into 14 percent how much is your WACC. So, that is basically your average of 11 percent, your WACC is average of 11. Your suggested answer you can look at it numbers, cost of equity 11.3 we calculated using geared ge beta, ungeared beta, again geared beta, can you remember that? That based on that CAPM calculation we got 11.3 cost of equity, cost of debt 8 percent they are given in unseen material, W is easy, weightage was 86 and 14, we calculated earlier on the preceding discussion and W is easy 11 percent. Since W is 11 percent you discount at 11. So, if you look at your free cash flows based valuation, free cash flow based valuation 11,705, 11,705. 
So your value equity plus del debt is 11.75, 11.705. So can you go back to the and suggested answer, page number 8, sorry 9, page number 9. 11,705 minus 2.1 billion. Debt is 2.1. This market value is equity plus debt market value. As I mentioned here, it's a market value equity plus debt. 11.7 billion market value equity plus debt. Debt market value, we don't have market value for debt. It's a book value 2.1 billion. You minus, then you are getting 9.6 billion. 9.6 billion. That you divide by number of shares, 10 rupee per share, they are given. So total equity capital, you are looking at state of capital. When you look at your balance sheet under pre seen 5.9 billion state of capital, 10 rupees shares. That means we are talking about 596 million shares. 596 million shares. That gives you 16 rupees 11 cents per share value. 16 rupees 11 cents per share. 16.11 per share. DCF method, the range is 15 to 20. So we are somewhere there. So this computation is right. We have to validate that number. So we have validated it's roughly 16. So which is within the 15 and 20. So the number is correct. Number is correct. So what we want to know, that is your first part just to get the number. So that we have looked at with a straightforward free cash flow based valuation using WSE computation. So we have got the value per share is 16.11, which is within the range. Second part of the same question, second part of the same question, why explain three reasons for such variation in the value per share when compared to market based valuation. So market based valuation 33, DCF based valuation 16 or 15 to 20. Why it's difference, reason for difference, reasons for difference. First of all understand that this discounted cash flow method is subject to many assumptions, theoretical. It has many assumptions. So the assumptions include various things. Your growth rate, cost of capital, perpetual growth rate, perpetual growth rate, your operating profit, depreciation relationship, working capital investment relationship, capital expenditure, assumption or forecast. So these are all assumptions. We are working on that. Based on that, we say there is a value. We need to know what, how we calculate a number. Market based valuation means they are, the examiner does not say exactly what method they are looked at. Market based means in the market you say similar company how much is worth. So we do not know exactly what is the basis, right. But if you say you are using similar company, right, based on their earnings, based on the earnings, you say 1.9 billion profit company, 1.9 billion company is worth so much. So you say 1.9 billion company is worth, this is the value of the company. So you can look at it. So if that is the case, you see that is the value you are talking about based on earnings or similar business, similar five, comp five segments company, value of the company. So market is, environment you look at it and value the company. So it is always based on the market environment at that point in time, at that point in time. So that value and your DCF method value are different, 1533. The examiner is asking why, so why? So we need to say, having this knowledge, we need to say main reason, main reason, timing. Why? February, when you valued no COVID, August, when you valued, you have COVID. Why I am saying this? You are looking at the market environment 
when you look at in February, there is no problem in the market. There is no effect of COVID. No one knows at that time. Right? It's not serious. We were not talking about in Sri Lanka. We are not bothered about it. So the businesses are as usual. People were planning the future as it is. So all your forecasted cash to all the businesses, all everything is working on a perfect uh, normal situation. Whereas in August, we have gone through the first phase. March it started. By August, we have gone through a lockdown. We are very much sure of what's happening in the world. And we are very, very worried about it, uncertainties, concerns. So at that point, when you look at the future, your future is future related thing are more uncertain. So you have considered the impact of COVID in your future cash flows. So your cash flows would have resulted in a lower value. So the main reason is timing, February and August. That's the key reason. That is one. Second, as I mentioned, the market based market based could have been on earnings. Could have been on earnings way. But DCF is DCF is cash flows. Two things. So it will not give you same value. Earnings based is one, cash flow based is one. Third, the overall overall sentiment, overall sentiment of the business world. February overall market environment is good. Right? But in August, the overall sentiment is not good. So that does have an impact on the value. Fourth, as I mentioned, assumptions. Assumption on cash flow. Assumption on cash flow will give you value different to any other method. So when you change your assumption, your value can be even at the same time if you are valuing. Even if you are valuing at the same time, February or August. If you are changing your assumption, your values are different. Not the same value. So that is all another reason. So please note, these are the couple of reasons. Main one is timing. Why the two values? Timing. February and November, August. Huge difference. Huge difference in the entire market environment. People are very much worried in August than February. Cash flows are not sure. Which business can survive? And COVID-19 disturbed your leisure industry, logistic industry. You are already loss making. Further you will lose. So you can't sell it also. Because no one is going to buy that. So you are very much worrying and then that cash flows are very much disturbing. Even you might uh, incur huge losses in other two segments and eating into the FMCG and healthcare. So that is what your August valuation is so much lower. So the other things are whatever we have mentioned. So this is basically the question number one. Question number one. Question number A. Then, before moving on to the question B, we look at the question C. Question C. Question C. So, what are question C? Question C says, advise the chairman. Advise the chairman of HCL on the following areas of concern. Following areas of concern. One, whether the mega project should be funded mainly through debt. So if you read out the mega project information under matter one, if you read the matter one, it's about a COVID vaccine you are going to manufacture and you are doing a seven years of research. At the end of seven year only you can commence commercial production. This is all forecast. We are planning a seven year of uh, research. Then we are going to manufacture a vaccine from seventh year. So after that you are going to generate cash flow. And you are seven years of research. You are not going to get any revenue. Any revenue. So it's only going to be a cost or the expenditure investment. So the money what you are going to pump in 
will not have any cash repayment over the seven year period. So the question now we come to C part, Roman number one, advise whether the mega project should be funded mainly through debt. So the mega project, if you really look at, mega project they talk about expected cost in phase one, 1.25 billion, I am just taking through. Mega project phase one, 1.25 billion, 1.25 billion, page number you can look at it, page number seven, page number seven, phase one, duration one year, one year you will take, 1.25 billion you are investing, phase two, duration two years, you are going to spend 2.5 billion, so you are talking about 1.25 billion. 2.5 billion, then phase 3 for type 1, 7.5 billion, type 2, 6.25 billion. So, we are talking about say roughly say 7 billion, average of that I am just taking. Then commercial production before starting, you are talking about 15 billion or 12.5. So, you are talking about 13 billion average. So, we are talking about first Three seven years, this seven year in, you are investing 13 billion. This seven years, you are talking about around 11 billion. 11 billion. So, the project will incur 11 billion for seven years. After that, again 13 billion to start the commercial production. So, you are talking about 11 billion to be invested over a seven year period for which you do not get any revenue. Any revenue. And your size of your company, 12 billion equity company, 12 billion equity company, 2 billion debt company, 12 billion equity company. And you are talking about 11 billion investment in research and develop whatever. So, the question Roman number 1, whether the mega project should be funded mainly through debt. So, we at the pre seen level, we said this company have a lower gear of 14 percent, lower gear of 14 percent. So, go, a company which has a profitable business with a lower gearing, always it is better to borrow money and invest. Why? Your borrowing will be at a lower cost and your investment will generate profit because you are already a profitable company. That means, you are earning returns. So, your profits are more than your cost of debt. So, the difference what you get will go to shareholder. So, your primary objective of maximizing shareholder wealth maximization will be achieved. So, that is the gearing objective gearing objective, borrow money at a lower cost than the return on investment and generate more return to shareholder. That is the objective of gearing. So, at the pre seen level, we said better the company go for borrowing because you have very good opportunity of making shareholder wealth more and more because your gearing is very low and you are a profitable company. But now we realize we are going on to a new project which is a very large risky project where 11 billion capital is needed for 7 years average. 7 billion, 7 years of uh, investment 11 billion which is almost equal to our size of the company and we have no cash inflows for 7 years, cash inflow 7 years. So, the question is asking whether the company should go for 100 percent debt financing, 100 percent debt financing. So, what we have to say no, why? Reasons reasons. Investment is almost 11 billion for 7 years of research or testing. No revenue, no cash. So, that is first point. Why you should not go for debt 100 percent? Investment is almost 11 billion for 7 years of research and testing, no revenue cash flows. Second, no matching. Always remember any debt capital, any borrowing should be matched with your revenue cash flow. You should not just blindly borrow money because no bank is going to give you 7 year grace of non payment of interest or capital, that is not possible. So, therefore, you have to see that this is whether workable, not workable. Third, HCL money or cash flows, 
utilization will damage HCL performance. If you do not have any revenue coming from this project, you have to finance, you have to finance from HCL. So, if you are going to finance from HCL, what is going to happen? You have a big issue, big issue. You would understand that. You are going to depend on HCL cash flows or revenue to pay off this debt, which is going to be very much damaging your HCL operations and their performance. So, that is a other concern you will have. Sector, next one, risk increases. This kind of borrowing, 100 percent borrowing increases your financial risk, financial risk or gearing. Your gearing also increases, financial risk increases. So, therefore, we should not go to, we should not go to 100 percent finance this project by the debt capital we will get into difficulty. One is no revenue cash flow, no matching, HCL cash flow and money and will be disturbed and it will damage the performance of the HCL other businesses. Risk increases, especially financial risk increases due to the higher gearing. Then the Roman number 2, key possible reasons, key possible reasons why the existing shareholders are suggesting to undertake the project under a new company. So, the present shareholders are saying, okay, even if you want to go for this project, mega project, better to use, better to use a new company rather than using it under HCL or doing the project under HCL. Why? Possible reason. One, HCL has to repay loans for seven years. So, seven years you have to repay the loan whatever taken because they do not get any revenue. Further, if project fails more than 7 years, why if you borrow money then you have to pay that money after that also. If you say you are going to get mix of debt and shareholder money, then profitability of HCL drops, profitability HCL drops and overall value drops. Third, third, until project comes to some positive stage, HCL risk increases. So, without you differentiating your mega project from HCL operation, if you are continuing to be a part of HCL, then the HCL risk goes up tremendously. Why? We people do not know what is going to happen. So, until you your project comes to a some positive stage where people realize that you are coming to a latter part of your vaccine, where you are going to come up with the vaccine, then some positivism. Otherwise, the risk goes up very much. So, HCL risk will go up very much. Then, HCL, HCL, uh, what you call the performance, HCL performance deteriorate, deteriorates due to, due to high finance cost. I, I mentioned this profitability here, right? Here the finance cost will eat into it, eat into it that again affects the performance. So, I think maybe this is sometime 
duplicating, right? End of the day, what you are saying, profitability and performance of the company continuously drops. Then, uh, if you are going for IPO, if IPO value will be lower due to uncertainties. If you are going for IPO, your value will be lower due to uncertainty. Because people will not see that value of this business or mega project till it comes to a point. So, the value will be very lower, people do not buy that. So, when you are going to buy it, it or if you are going for IPO, your share price will be very low. So, there is a negativism in that. So, better you take a separate company for this purpose. So, you are isolating that. The other thing is like even if the project fails, if project fails, that company is a failure, not the HCL failure. So, only that company becomes a failure, not the HCL. So, that is also another reason, right. In case of failure, in case of failure, HCL could be protected, HCL could be protected. In case of failure of the project, HCL can be protected if you have a separate company for that purpose. So, these are the some of the reasons why HCL or the company is to create a new company, new company to run this business, run this business. Okay. So, with that we will uh, stop and then we will continue the balance 2 questions I think uh, B part that evaluating the mega project and the financial analysis of the uh, segment, few segments which basically we discussed at the pre scene level, logistics and the leisure and the power, what has to be done, we will discuss that later. Thank you.